Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, You shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will fly up and I will kill you with the sword. And then your own wives will be widows, and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner to them by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else does he have to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Please. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, 
and I am safe from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God, my Savior, you who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us for the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction, with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, the gospel for today begins with a contest between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They seem to be at odds with one another. They're both trying to trip up Jesus and not succeeding. Uh, They are not succeeding in this. They're struggling for power, and both groups are feeling threatened by Jesus. And it seems to me that it's a strange thing that they would be threatened by him, Because all he is offering to them, and in the gospel for today, is just some very simple, very simple understanding of the law, though quite profound. Love God, love your neighbor, and then you fulfill the law. So we have this this reading from the book of Exodus that we begin with, um, where the Pharisees and Sadducees certainly would have been familiar with the law. They knew about the Ten Commandments. They knew about the 613 laws that are enumerated in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. Uh, Just treatment of the immigrant, the widow, and the orphan is just one of, of those laws, just one of those things singled out, but with particular importance. 
uh, they were always to remember that they themselves were immigrants. They themselves were descendants of these slaves of Egypt. They were to remember their humble beginnings, not to belittle themselves, though, but to recognize how God loves them. They were oppressed, wronged by the Egyptians, and they cried out to the Lord, and the Lord heard, and he answered them. So they are to remember that, and they are to take that as a model for their own behavior towards someone who is oppressed or someone who is marginalized in one way or another. In the Catholic Church, we call that the preferential option for the poor, that we have that, that special place for them and that we make extra effort when it comes to those who are disadvantaged. You know, when we, when we think about this, uh, this whole idea, though, of the Israelites themselves becoming the people of God and leaving Egypt on this exodus and making this journey to a foreign land and being immigrants in that land, I, we have to think, I think, about our own ancestors who left their countries and came here to seek freedom and opportunity. And it continues certainly to this day. Though the past is filled with horror stories of prejudice and oppression of those immigrant populations, we are given the opportunity to have that stop. Even though we hear of horrific things even now, it can stop here. I was thinking about the way that this community in particular has embraced those immigrants in our own community. Now, we have people from many different countries and many different backgrounds with us, but I'll just say a few things about what's going on with, with our own um, Hispanic community. And I just wanted, to, just wanted to say one thing about the Knights of Columbus. You know, they, they really reached out and they, the, uh, their membership grew immensely, more than doubled, when they decided that it would be a bilingual group. It would be a group of two different languages and yet still work together. And they made great strides and won awards for the work that they'd done. A beautiful thing, a beautiful example just within our own uh, small community. It's also interesting to note, I think, that Spanish-speaking people are learning English at a faster rate than any other immigrant population we have experienced in, our, in this country. Amazing thing. I was talking to someone recently about that, a person preparing for a confirmation in another parish, and um, I was just admiring him because, you know, growing up with Spanish and then trying to learn English. I don't know how anybody learns English. English is a crazy language. I don't know how you, how you possibly can, can learn all of these exceptions or whatever. But uh, it is amazing the way that that's happening. We must see, though, immigrants not as separate, but as our own brothers and sisters and act toward them as God has acted toward us and our ancestors. We are all children of immigrants. You know, my father's parents came here from Italy. My mother's father came from Scotland, and her, and her mother's parents uh, were from Ireland and Germany. What we see is an invitation to share in the compassion of Jesus when it comes to the treatment of people who were not born here. That same compassion that the Lord showed the Israelites is the compassion that we are to show to the immigrant, the widow, the orphan. There's that interesting story about, about the, um, uh, about the uh, co cloak that's taken as a pledge and how it has to be returned. What else does, they, does this person have to sleep in if you've kept his cloak? There has to be that compassion for, some, for them. Um, we can't inflict suffering upon them. 
been difficult enough. The Lord is so compassionate that he would never ask us for something in repayment for what we have done. He only asks that we imitate him in the good that is done. This kind of compassion is really at the heart of the gospel for today. This twofold commandment to love God and love neighbor, they're really inseparable. God has loved us first, he's loved us into life, and our return to the Lord is giving him what is due to love as he is loved, to act toward our neighbor as God acts towards us. We learn compassion from God. God is close to us, watching us. Our lack of following God's law is an insult to God, not to mention an injustice to our neighbor. If we accept this challenge to love, to love God and our neighbor, as Jesus is telling us, we know it has to go beyond just mere ritual. Our practice of our religion cannot be limited to what happens in this building, and that's it. Um, our engagement, our participation in this celebration is essential in fulfilling the commandment, yes. It's the source of the love that we need, the graces that we need in order to live out this twofold commandment of love of, of God and love of neighbor. That's essential, but it can't just stop here, or even with our own relationship with each other here. It has to go beyond that. It must go beyond that. Uh, to love as God has loved um, is also not just a list of things that we are supposed to do. You know, we keep appointment books. I keep an appointment book in my, uh, in my phone. Um, we put down anniversaries, birthdays, things like that to remind us of things that are happening, and I forget them because I forget to look at my calendar. So, <laughs> I don't know, I guess that sort of defeats the purpose, but maybe if I get into a better habit of looking at it, I'd be more on top of things. At any rate, um, these kind of things, they're not just a to-do list. They're not just something that we have to do, that we have to send a birthday card or maybe just a text or something like that. They're not a stack of bills that need to be paid. We don't really do these, just, these things just out of obligation. They are occasions for us to show our love for someone else a way to demonstrate that love that we have for them. I think in John's Gospel when he says, whoever does not love a brother whom he has seen cannot love God who he has not seen. When John says that, I think what he's really, what he's really saying is the demonstration of the love of God is how we love our neighbor what we do to them, how, how we treat them. That really demonstrates or is a concrete representation now of our love for God. Okay. Um, I've mentioned already that it's the celebration of the Eucharist and so many other ways that we receive these graces from God, but so special is the celebration of the Mass that we have this intimate encounter with our Lord, a physical encounter with the Lord as we receive his body. He asks us to do this and brings us to this, um, to this uh, celebration so that we can be filled, so that we can receive what we need. Our part in this is acknowledging our God, loving God, and opening ourselves to all the assistance we need. Asking the Lord to give that to us in the Eucharist. I always think of trying to make this a little bit more particular, a little bit more concrete. And I was thinking one of the ways that we can do that, this is to just reflect for a short time on a particular challenging situation we find ourselves in maybe with a neighbor. 
and to make that part of this communion, to be thinking about that, to be, to be saying, Lord, this is the particular grace I need now, dealing with this one person. So it's okay to make that part of your communion today. And, and um, as you come forward, to have that person in mind. Allow the Lord to, I would even say, tailor make the grace that you need in this circumstance and receive it as you receive Jesus' body. Then we'll be filled. Then we'll be ready. Then what we can do is spend the rest of the week making use of that grace, loving our neighbor and demonstrating our love for God. So let's just show God how much we love him in how we love our neighbor. Please stand for our symbol of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As Jesus taught us, we come to God with confidence, bringing our concerns for the church and the world. For pastoral leaders and preachers, for dedicated liturgists and educators, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For patient peacemakers and negotiators, for compassionate leaders and honest lawmakers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For widows and orphans, for the abused and the abandoned, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live with chronic illness, for all impaired by addiction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this assembly, for all their loved ones who have died, we pray to the Lord. And we offer the Mass today for the Lusk family and for Marge Turco and Franklin Whiteside. We pray to the Lord. Uh, please add your own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Living in true God, you are our strength and our refuge. Hear the prayers of your people, which we make through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, we look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to, to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you have loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joan of Arc and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite those now uh, watching the uh, video to make your spiritual communion with the Lord.
we will ring out our joy at your saving help and exult in the name of our God. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Alma and Guadalupe have brought their daughter here, uh, who is now three years old, and it's a tradition within the, uh, our Hispanic community and other communities to uh, recognize her and give her a special blessing here as she turns three. So that's what I'm going to do right now <laughs> in Espanol. Santísima Virgen María, Madre de Dios y Madre Nuestra, te presentamos a esta niña que Dios ha dado y confi confiado a tu cuidado y protección. Te la consagramos con todo nuestro corazón y te la entregamos confiadamente a tu ternura y vigilancia maternal. Que por tu poderosa intercesión Dios la proteja en su alma y en su cuerpo, y la preserve de todos los males. Si algún día tuviera la desgracia de pecar, recuérdale, Madre amorosa, que eres bondadosa con el pecador arrepentido, y condúcela de nuevo a la amistad uh, con tu divino Hijo. A sus padres, ayudales a cumplir fielmente sus obligaciones con ella y en el compromiso que han contraído delante de Dios. Que con su palabra y especialmente con el ejemplo le enseñen a creer y practicar las verdades de la fe, el amor al prójimo y el cumplimiento de la ley de Dios. Concédenos finalmente, Virgen Santa, que algún día podamos reunirnos todos en la casa de nuestro Padre Celestial, en la intimidad de tu Hijo y en el gozo del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Let's, let's acknowledge this blessing now that she has just received. You look so beautiful. <laughs> uh, the Ma the uh, Knights of Columbus will be selling Christmas cards in the parking lot after Mass. The proceeds will benefit the St. Joan of Arc Faith Formation Program. If you still have your Knights of Columbus baby bottles, which you picked up probably a long time ago, but if you still have them, please return them to the church. And there's a big box in the narthex for you to drop them off in. Uh, lector books are still available. Uh, lectors, please pick up your book and sign the sheet on the table. Uh, bulletins, uh, of course, are available now. And at the end of Mass, I ask that you uh, please remain in your pews. Uh, until the hospitality ministers uh, direct you to leave the sanctuary. Please do not linger in the aisles, the narthex, or the portico in front of the church. In order to maintain a safe distancing, we ask that you continue walking out to the parking lot. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.